What's going on guys, welcome back to Nolan TCG, and we are back here today with another deck profile, and this time it is for Zodiac Eldritch. So now that after a very, very long time I finally have Eldritch, it's time to like mess around with it a little bit. I've been like splashing into stuff here and there, and Zodiac Eldritch was something that I've wanted to try for a little while, so I figured I'd like put it together, see how it plays out, and ultimately I feel as though this is like a solid list to go with. I do apologize as well for this one not being on Wednesday, it's on Friday as well. We had to kind of like shift it around because my work schedule was a bit kind of funny this week. It was like a bit all over the place and I had to work a bit more than I was expecting to. So didn't have time to record this before Wednesday. So instead we're now going to be recording this for a Friday upload. But before we do get started as always, please remember to drop down below and hit that subscribe button if you are new here because we are always happy to have new people. And let's get on into the deck profile. Okay, so starting us off, we are playing just two copies of Zodiac Ram Ram. Um, the reason why I'm only playing two of this is simply because, like, the deck space is a little tight when you're playing as many, like, hand traps as we've decided to go with. If you do want to trim those down, or, like, you want to, like, mix around your Zodiac lineup, I would definitely recommend playing three Ram Ram at the moment. It's very, very good. Uh, against Virtual World, it kind of stops you from being, like, popped by the, uh, the trap that they play, which means this card comes up quite a lot. Um, so three copies would be good. We are just playing two at the moment in this build. Um, another two of is Zodiac Thoroughblade. We're playing two of this. Um, I originally used to play this at three. I ultimately don't like this at three. Uh, the amount of times this gets gammed and then it's not on your board anymore and you're just like, oh, a big sad. is just something that you don't want to have happen multiple times. So just two Thoroughblade is fine. I find a lot of the time I'm not actually activating this if I feel as though I could maybe get gammed because it's just not worth it to not have the board presence there anymore. Next off, we've got three copies of Zodiac Whiptail after that. Um, just banishes a lot of stuff, like banishes pretty much everything that it attacks, so good card. Um, in the current format, like removing stuff that can then be a threat in Graveyard later is important, so Zodiac Whiptail is very, very good for that fact. Then last off for the Zodiac lineup, we have, of course, one copy of Rat, uh, your Foolish Burial off your normal summon. Uh, you just want to send Combo or send um, Rat Pierre, oh not Rat Pierre, Rat Pierre's the card we're using, or Ram Ram. Um, does just facilitate a lot of combos. Uh, again, can be gammed, which can be a bit bad, but eventually, like in the case you're using your rat, you're typically trying to combo off, so you don't mind walking into a hand trap in that situation. Um, then next off, we move into our Eldritch. We're playing three copies of Golden Lord. Um, I feel as though at the moment, three copies of Golden Lord is correct. Um, at my locals, a lot of people play Eldritch, and just in the meta at the moment, there's a lot of stuff that people are trying to like remove from Grave as threats, so buy like a byproduct you can then remove golden lords instead um so yeah i feel as though the three copies of golden lord is correct um if you're playing two and say you have one on board and you get hit with an ice dragon's prison you lose because that's both of your golden lords gone so i feel as though playing three is correct just it can be a little bit bricky but you just want to have that in the situation that it's good um something as well that's coming around in the format at the moment is shadows it's getting a lot more popular and you just don't want to see your aerial come through and then like banish your lords and then you're out of ways to play. Then next off, we get into a hand trap lineup. Uh, you can switch this for a trap lineup if you do want to. Um, ultimately, as I'm playing a bit more heavier into the zoo lineup, I feel as though playing a hand trap lineup is better than playing a physical trap lineup because the zoo, the, the Zeus can kind of like ruin your day if you have a bunch of traps set and you're like, well, I don't really want to use my Zeus because that's a thing. So in that case, we are playing three copies of Droll and Lockbird. Um, I feel as though it's really, really good in the current format, so Droll must must go in. Then next off, we've got three copies of Lancia, another card that's very solid in the format, although this isn't as good as Droll. Uh, you can definitely change these hand trap lineups as to whatever your locals determines, so definitely consider that. Um, if you are playing more of a trap lineup, you can probably play stuff like Solemns or maybe even Ice Dragon Prison in your main deck. Then two copies of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion round out our main deck, oh, our main hand trap lineup, sorry. Um, the reason why I'm just playing two of this is because it is a, like, super hard once per turn. So, yeah. Just two copies of Ghost Bell, even though it is very good at the moment. You can possibly consider mixing up your Lanciers for your Ghost Bells. I just feel as though three Drolls is definitely the correct choice. Uh, one copy of Zodiac Barrage follows that up. Card is just amazing. You don't really need to explain it. It is every Zoo card, and it doesn't use your normal summon. Uh, three Tenkies to search for your normal summons. They just effectively Zoo card to hand. Good card. Uh, three copies of Cursed Eldland, more consistency, adds the Eldritch cards from the deck to the hand. Um, again, good card. These are just like, if you see a spell card in this deck, you're typically like having a good time. If you even like go further and you decide to play the um, version of this deck that involves Dogmatica, 
even more if you see a spell card you're having a good time so blue cards equal go we do have one copy of elixir of black awakening it is probably like the worst blue card that we play but it is still consistency so here it is uh three copies of forbidden droplets round out our spell lineup um negation out to dragoon that's a lot of stuff actually um, the fact that you're left with like a lot of continuous spells and trap cards in this deck floating around in your board just gives your droplets just a lot more free resource to play. One copy of combo comes up next, um, just for recycling your resources and then going again. Uh, you do typically need that when you have your Dryden. Um, of course, as well, like on the earlier subject of like graveyard banishment being popular in the format, losing your Dryden is really bad. So you want to have like the combo to try and get it out of your grave as quickly as possible if it gets into there. Um, it is also more relevant when you look at our extra deck as to the way we're going to interact with our Dryden Engrave. Then next off, we're playing just maxed out lineups for the Golden Traps. So we've got three copies of Conquistador, three copies of Hoquero, just typically like your board and grave control that you want to be playing in the current format. Then three copies of Scarlet Sanguine. Um, as we're playing maxed out Golden Lords, we can play like a maxed out lineup. Um, if you do want to like mix around with your ratios though, I would recommend probably like cutting either Hoquero or Conquistador to two just as to whatever you feel as though will be necessary at your current situation. Okay, next off we have the extra deck, and of course, the big boy. We are playing two copies of Divine Arsenal AA Zeus. Um, just because you're playing Zodiac, it does come up quite a lot, like having the ability to make two. Um, also, you make them very, very big, so you're going to be using the effect multiple times, so don't feel too bad about playing two Zeus, because they will come up, and they will just make your opponent like hate you, I guess. Um, after that, we have, of course, one copy of Zodiac Dryden. Um, card's very, very good. Just to slap it on your end board at the start. Gives you the free pop. Um, the more you can have this on board on your opponent's turn, the better situation you're going to be in, just because it's a free pop every time. Uh, two copies of Borbo to get us into our two copies of Zeus. Uh, this is just a free attack direct, so why not play two copies? You just kind of match them off with your Zeus's, so use one to go into the Zeus every time. Uh, two copies of Tiger Mortar if you want to like try and get stuff back from Grave to kind of push a bit more damage through on your Borbo attacks. Three copies of... Sorry, there was two copies of Tiger Mortar before, but we have two copies... Oh, co sorry. Apologies. I normally play three copies of Chaka 9, but I have cut down to two copies of Chaka 9. Um, you're typically just using this to bring back your Dryden. Attach underneath it with the Tiger Mortar if you're going that route. And then your Dryden just has a free pop. Gets it out of the graveyard as well, so it can't be banished. Uh, one copy of Hammer Kong. This is just typically your burner Zodiac card that you're going to be slapping down as the first thing you play. This gives you the free detach so that you can keep something with a bit of attack power underneath. Uh, one Desperado Driver. Oh, they've changed the name for this. I forgot. That's the OCG name. But it's Drill Driver Vespinato. Uh, this is just um, does piercing when it attacks. I'm almost certain that's correct. Now I'm, just double, now I'm doubting myself. Yeah, it's piercing data damage. Also it gives you like a stack up that you can go into your Zeus with, which is always good. Next off, we go into our rank 5, so we now have, well, technically you can make a Drill Driver off your um, Eldritch Traps, but you can make the Constella Platys as well. Um, gives you those bounces, which is always good. Uh, then we have Big Train Boys, so we've got one Gustav Max and one Juggernaut Lieb. Um, in the grind game, this will just present game on board when you're playing with your Golden Lords, so it's always good to have these guys accessible. And then we have one copy of Mega Clops, just because you're playing a 14 XEs monsters in your extra deck, and a lot of decks can't out this, so it's always a good way to go. But that wraps up here for the deck profile for this one. So as always, if you do have any recommendations and stuff that you would change with the deck, make sure to comment them down below. Um, yeah, ultimately I feel as though this deck's pretty good. I probably think the um, version that plays Dogmatica is probably a better list. Like it's much more like it has a lot more back and forth. But you do like kind of find conflicting engines sometimes, which can be a bit harsh, which is why I felt as though just playing the two engines with the hand traps just kind of felt correct for me. But that is something you can consider. But as always, I've been Ben from Nolan TCG, and have a good afternoon, everybody.